Hello and very warm welcome to this special interview focused on public sector leadership series that ET government has been organizing over the years. And we have been talking to different public sector leaders and understanding as to how they are contributing to India's digital transformation journey. And today I'm glad to tell you that I'm joined by Dr. Lavnish Chanana, Senior Vice President for Asia Pacific and Japan for SAP. Dr. Chanana is responsible for driving public policy, thought leadership engagement for SAP with government and different stakeholders. Uh, Dr. Chanana, thank you so much for taking our time and joining us today. Thank you. Uh, let me begin by asking you, we are in a year wherein we are celebrating India's G20 presidency. And you would have noticed that over the years, India has invested in digital public goods. Uh, India Stack is one of them, GSTN is one of them, Aadhaar is one of them, UPI is one of them. And now there is a lot of discussion that is happening around um, open network for digital commerce, which, which can bring uh, newer innovation in e-commerce space. Uh, uh, would you like to share in the beginning your thought as to how you see this trajectory and also the country's focus on uh, making digital more inclusive, more social, and equally available to all the areas, be it whether somebody accessing government services from metropolitan cities or from rural areas. So that inclusivity is uh, has to be there, which government is focusing. If you could share your thought. Okay, thank you, Ujale, first of all, for having me uh, on this talk series that you are organizing. Uh, coming to your question on, on G20, I believe, uh, you know, uh, obviously India has uh, has set many benchmarks in the provisioning of the digital public infrastructure and the impact that it has created on the you know improvement of lives that that is quite visible and uh, i don't need to go into the statistics of uh, the direct benefit transfer or the aadhars or uh, or the other uh, utilities that we have seen including the democratization part of ondc that uh, that we have done I think uh, more important is what's in it now when it comes to G20. Now, to me broadly, uh, we have uh, the potential for the leadership demonstration and the potential for collaboration right. on the G20 platform and what would this collaboration look like. Right. I see it as a matrix, uh, you know. So, my first pillar uh, vertical in, the, in this entire collaboration piece is the whole infrastructure and connectivity piece. Right. And that's a... Mass and and you know the number of internet users at least in India mm. and and in other countries is actually going on uh, and and government is very clear that uh, we will be taking it to the 1.2 1.3 billion mark very soon uh, now uh, sooner than later so that's one pillar that is reaching out in terms of connectivity to uh, yeah. you know supported by that is this whole digital public uh, infrastructure or right. digital public goods that you mentioned around uh, and that actually provides the basis for uh, from a citizen services that are now being offered using right. the digital public as a seamless linkage to the back end right. uh, you know objectives and seamless whole of government agenda also right. so that is one pillar the second pillar obviously is the vertical right. is the talent right. is the skilling right. the digital skilling and and with the largest stem pool in the world I think India stands at a position where we can actually take a lead uh, in uh, in creating talent pool f on technology, on emerging technologies. And obviously, the one important pillar is uh, showing to the world that how you can move from services to manufacturing, right. which our uh, Honorable Prime Minister is always saying that, uh, you know, let's move from consumers of technology to producers of uh, technology. And that's where the skill shift in terms of the emerging technologies, including the electronic manufacturing, including the hardware, mm. would be the second pillar. That, right. That's uh, that second uh, pillar. Third pillar is obviously the trust and cybersecurity. Right. You, can, you can put mm. it as uh, two separate pillars, but right. then trust and... Uh, Cybersecurity is is a big big pillar wherein mm -hmm. I believe there is a huge potential for collaboration right. that can uh, uh, come in. And to me, the fourth uh, pillar in uh, G20 and in this part of the world at least is the SMEs. Right. If we are able to mm -hmm. with 63 million SMEs, if we are able to somehow project uh, this uh, to the world that this is how we can actually lead the massive adoption of digitalization right. by small and medium enterprises. I think there will be no 
uh, parallel. So right. these are the now. So what should be done across mm -hmm. these? And this is the horizontal that right. I am talking about. I think there is a tremendous scope from moving from governmental consultations to public-private partnerships right. in terms of demonstration. Mm -hmm. I think the the government consultations can now get translated into on-ground demonstrable projects right. with private sector participation. Mm -hmm. That's one. Second big area as a horizontal is the capacity building of right. uh, government officials and even industry right. for that matter on all these areas. Right. That's a big uh, mm -hmm. uh, area to me. And the third obviously which every country as a horizontal is taking is this whole data governance piece. Right. Right. So everybody is uh, concerned on, mm -hmm. on the data ownership right. data and I think there is a huge collaboration with private sector uh, right. uh, technologies. And, and on data governance, I just want to take one minute because that's an that's an area where every government and every right. uh, because that's that's where we are getting innovations working on, and that's where we are getting the uh, regulatory attention right. uh, getting focused on. So on the data governance, I think we have we are seeing innovations like in in Europe we see the uh, development around models like Catena X, where in automotive industries are sharing peer to peer data exchange. Right. On one side, that's <coughs> happening. On the other side, we are now getting into the data diplomacy Absolutely. space. I think on a horizontal mm. space, the private sector participation right. is, is huge. So you rightly mentioned about some of the important things, especially on capacity building. Second is on the digital trust. And uh, the third one is how we need to create a linkage on data governance. And that brings to the fundamental thing as to how we have reached to this particular place wherein we have access to a lot of data, we have access to a lot of digitization product and services. And that has only happened because of the fact that over the decade, there are a lot of innovation has happened in the cloud technology space. And somehow the cloud technology, both for enterprises as well as for the government organization, has become a de facto platform for innovation. So any new thing that you see in the government, even in enterprise, those things are being done even in the air gap environment but on a very private or hybrid cloud environment and uh, could you share because uh, sap is one organization whose product and solutions are being used across most of the public sector organization government organization what kind of trajectory that you are observing in relation to the cloud is it only happening on a non-serious workload getting into the cloud or do you see cloudification also happening on a very serious workload, even in some of the air gap environment? Oh, so I, I don't know whether I have a straight answer to your, uh, your question, but uh, you know, uh, one thing is for sure, cloudification is the way. Right. You know, there is no other uh, uh, way forward, right? Whether we wish it or we don't, uh, that's. Now, in terms of the, in, uh, my, my larger, uh, you know, point is what should be done that the movement to cloud and cloudification is expedited. Right. The adoption of cloud as a solution, one, you know, is is leads to the efficiency gains and transformation that we are we are looking at. Second is safe, secure, inclusive, and uh, and what uh, the government priorities are. So that's these two to get married. Right. You know, let me talk about the first part as mm. to how I can improve. Uh, I think there are series of things. On on one obviously is the policy framework. Right. Now we have uh, <coughs> you know in India we have taken a you know great uh, uh, you know first leadership uh, uh, mover advantage in terms of empanelling cloud service providers in right. terms of uh, creating uh, the required wherewithal for Megaraj as the right. as my cloud uh, first policy. Plus the right. government uh, public sectors also is now shifting gradually to uh, the. I think. The, the enabling policy framework would be a key. Right. And again, I come back to the second point of capacity building. Right. Yeah. And cloud cannot be devoid from the whole data management scenario. Right. Cloud and this have to live, uh, so, you know, uh, sync up uh, together. <coughs> and and with now with the new Digital India, uh, you know, act mm -hmm. and also, I mean, obviously, Digital India Act has a different connotation, but still, the whole digital data protection, right. uh, you know, in terms of ask, I think these are things that uh, will continue to evolve as we as right. we mature. Having said so, the role of cloud, mm. uh, you know, particularly for the SMEs, right. you it cannot be undermined. Right. What is SME's uh, challenge? Mm -hmm. Awareness, right. access uh, mm. to the technology. If I'm able to provide low-cost access on cloud solutions right. mm. with, with very little upfront uh, mm. uh, 
know, that's the way forward uh, and many are, many are very, very eagerly looking at right. the direction in, in, in that front. Right. So, it's an evolving discipline. Hmm. We are now, I, I won't say that we are nascent anymore right. in this. Right. We have evolved from a nascent to getting mature uh, uh, maturity stage right. and now what will happen is, and the more important part is the whole uh, shift from digital India right. to digitally intelligent India, right. that is the AI, IoT and right. uh, this would now <coughs> require this data right. and to get this data we need to have uh, cloudification. Right. So I'm actually forming the base, hmm. the foundation that I was right. looking at. Yeah. Oh, you are absolutely right. And uh, you mentioned about the SMEs, especially the small and medium enterprises. And what we also observe that uh, during the pandemic, it was a time where we realized at what level the digitization, different organizations are, the kind of challenges that they face. And we saw that the SMEs were at different stages of digital, uh, digitalization journey. And because of that, some of them were not able to very quickly translate into an, a work for, you know, anywhere work environment or other things. Since your organization, especially the SAP, works across different strata of, uh, you work with a large corporate, you work with SME, you work with the government. When you look at the digital transformation journey of a, a small and medium enterprises, I mean, their requirement will be slightly different. And you rightly said that uh, the cost factor possibly could be slightly also different. I mean, the kind of budget that they will have, that they can spend on IT, uh, might not be matching with a large corporate. But they need actually a solution. They want to be secure. They want to be digitally as agile and as scalable. What should be their optimal strategy? They want to be the best in class in terms of using the best of the SAP services, for example, or any uh, solutions and a cloud solution, but they also have to be optimally subsidized and uh, highly, you know, the budget friendly. Okay. Now, so, uh, you know, on SMEs, uh, uh, there, are, there are three broad areas that I want to talk about. Right. I think the larger challenge uh, in SMEs is this whole awareness. Right. Now, about, about the availability of low-cost technology solution, right. the sensitization of SMEs per se mm. itself is an enabler for digitalization. Right. You know, so that, let's, let's keep it, uh, mm. that in mind. Now, how will this sensitization happen? Now, different countries have different uh, approaches, some top-down uh, in terms of the government-led, some a peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, you know, learning. So, and that's the model that many of us are actually promoting in, in, in India because if you have done something, right. for me to visualize becomes far more simpler than uh, right. things. So people are, in. if you see in India, there are multiple examples of creating these SME forums, mm -hmm. including one created by uh, SAP. And we are actually also working with many industry bodies to create this sensitization. Right. That's one. Second issue is the access, right. access to low cost technology solutions and with cloud, <coughs> the models now are evolving wherein for example our public cloud solutions are right. there you know that that you can actually latch on and and to give you an example when we when we look at uh, even one step uh, mm. further to startups right. the unicorns 107 startups uh, out of 107 unicorns 47 are on sap right. because they were able to actually get the benefit of those processes right. you know as a part of uh, that and mm. uh, so that's where uh, is the advantage uh, uh, mm -hmm. that that SMEs offer. Now, so what's the approach uh, right. that we should do? I believe uh, the best uh, recommendatory thought process is a cluster-based approach for SMEs right. because uh, uh, individual SMEs will take uh, uh, time. But mm -hmm. then, from an industry perspective, the the replication across the same kind of uh, processes in a cluster, if right. it's an auto cluster, right. if it's an it's a pharma cluster, if right. it's that's a far easier uh, uh, approach uh, right. than we can uh, right. think of. So I think, uh, and for, for from an industry perspective, for each one of us, this is the market with 63 million right. uh, SMEs in the country. This is the market for, for growth. And, and, and one is from the right. business perspective. Second, the impact it can make on India's GDP right. in terms of the digital transformation, SMEs contributing more than one third right. to the, and creating uh, you know, more than uh, you know, 12 crore jobs uh, in, in India. Right. 
imagine the impact uh, and and i'm not even touching the right. piece of uh, sme contribution to sustainability Absolutely. if i digitalize mm. them right. imagine the the cost saving and optimal i right. think this is the way forward as we move absolutely but so far we have spoken about the g20 we have spoken about sme we have also spoken about the role of cloud in terms of uh, catalyzing a lot of stuff in the government organization adding to the cloud there is lot of innovation that has happened over the years in the next generation technology space and uh, i'm not referring to chat gpt which is very viral but i'm referring to hardcore b2b uh, government enterprise deployment of ai technology and machine learning to solve the real use cases on a mass scale level in government and we do see here in india like different government organization for example telangana andhra and some of the state government trying to utilize ai and machine learning even uh, blockchain technology in order to solve some of the problems sir what is your general assessment of uh, utilization of let's say ai and machine learning for improving the government experience gx and also bringing the transparency which is primarily ultimate goal of if you look at the digital india first goal it was in essage we will create connectivity we will create more open and transparent system more economically or digitally available to each citizen so how do you see the next generation technology somehow you know easing all these thing for the government organization with the help of its capability of having a high end automations yeah okay so you know as i as i mentioned uh, the next wave for digital india is digitally intelligent india right. the intelligent part will get into my systems that's for sure now that that will lead to experience uh, enhancement as you mentioned so there are multiple things that i can do one obviously starting from the basic use of ai in perception right. i do a facial recognition and all move to prediction i do a tax default prediction for you to prescription and then i prescribe in health uh, uh, as to what and then also to participation right. i i i actually use self driven uh, autonomous cars uh, so there are various stages of uh, ai now when it comes to the government service delivery i think the major advantage one is the whole analytics and personalization piece to the citizen <coughs> right so in terms of the citizen asking for services you know using technologies like ai i can actually predict as to what this uh, citizen would be needing and offer it that's that's one as you mentioned the areas like agri the areas like uh, you know weather forecasting huge potential areas for uh, uh, artificial intelligence to actually come in so that's one big area in terms of the uh, you know providing personalization uh, services second is the new models of service delivery using it because what will happen uh, <coughs> currently machines are co-workers are are now becoming co-workers to my government service delivery process chatbots mm -hmm. and 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 stuff are already becoming co-workers most of this repetitive task will be carried over taken over by the machines now i can focus on high value tasks uh, so that is the second advantage that uh, it offers in uh, government service delivery the third advantage that it uh, offers is the potential to create a talent pool within the country right. which i can use as a means to actually replicate some of my solutions elsewhere right. and 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 whether it's a part of the diplomatic or other as a part of the business uh, right. initiatives that's that's an opportunity that is still lying uh, waiting to be unbundled right. Um, right. Uh, as i see it now i would like you to focus on sap as an organization because we in india we see that we have invested a lot in digital public goods and we see a lot of transformation happening in different areas since sap works across different geographies and you are well entrenched both in government as well as large corporate enterprise customers uh we do have a focus here in india wherein we would like to ensure that you know the connectivity is across the countries but the best of the services are available to each and every one we would like to take the government experience to the next level all together uh, when you look at the global trend in terms of as to how people are managing their data as to how they are managing their, their it infrastructure how they are managing the content on the the it highway that they have created 
uh, from SAP perspective, what kind of opportunities you see, what kind of trend you observe, where you see that in overall scheme of things for SAP in India, uh, it's, it's, it's a market which is creating a shining example and that could be replicated in other parts of the world. Yes, so uh, the short and the sweet answer is India is one of the highest growth rate uh, market for us which is which right. is true for many uh, other companies uh, and if you see we are currently having 14000 uh, organizations in india on sap and these includes sme these include sme governments business large corporates infra companies utilities you name it uh, psus uh, we are we are working on that india realizing the strategic importance of india we have the innovation center that's called sap labs in india which is the second largest uh, in the world and it caters to all SAP product portfolios. Right. Now, that's the second thing uh, that I wanted to highlight. In terms of creating the ecosystem, right. we are partnering here with governments, uh, you know, on, on creating talent pool, on co-innovation, on, on actually working on solutions that can actually be uh, helpful. In fact, we are already in discussions uh, exploring uh, with o ONDC right. from B2C, how can SAP support the B2B right. Uh, right. arrangements uh, uh, linking to that. Mm. And then, uh, you know, and as a part of our CSR, we run this initiative called Kodunati, right. wherein we are reaching out to the grassroots, uh, you know, uh, people, level people in terms of the skilling and, and employability uh, increase. So series of things that we are doing here, creating the partner ecosystem, which will help uh, uh, you know the industry to actually implement those solutions and and do that we are taking as a start in fact our uh, global ceo uh, mr christian klein was here with the right. german chancellor yes. uh, it is and and the focus is to actually look at india right. in terms of continuing this this high growth rate uh, uh, you know, capturing this market dynamics that we see across on one side, wherein the eagerness to adopt is actually right. Uh, right. driven by 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 strategic government uh, initiatives, plus the solutioning and the products right. and the positioning that we can do. Actually, right. we are seeing a very interesting right. Right. marriage right. happening right. in right. India. So this is going to be my last question. Now, let me ask you: <clears throat> uh, We see across the globe there is a discussion happening on sustainability how your and because of the climate change the adaptability how do you manage your data the carbon footprint that you are creating and those have become quite important because it has a very long term impact on people's life on society on our climate um, issue that we have been focusing and we do see there is a lot of focus on having you know green data center green software management a lot of things is happening uh, could you share your experience as to how do you see, you know, the technology company or maybe a digital program becoming more greener, more sustainable? And what are some of the things that an organization need to ensure while embarking on this greener approach toward handling the IT projects? Yeah, so, so that's a question which is very close <coughs> to my heart. So I always say, uh, Ujale, the battle for sustainability will be won or lost in Asia. Right. You know, so because... Uh, uh, look at half of the world's population is here, uh, you know, and 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 more so in in India. Right. There are there are two points that I want to highlight. One, uh, you know, digital transformation today cannot be an adjacency to sustainability. Right. Green IT is just one part. IT for green is the another part that I want uh, to bring the focus on. Now, so what does it mean? when I'm taking a digital transformation initiative, right. am I capturing my sustainability metrics into my business process metrics? That, that <coughs> will provide me the data transparency as to where am I, right. right? When it comes to ESG reporting, when it comes to data modeling, when it comes to my recycling uh, percentages calculation, first stage that the companies need to take is this data transparency. Right. Now using this data develop insight and develop models mm. and that is the second point that we have been focusing. Don't look at sustainability as a compliance or right. a good to project kind <coughs> of initiative. It's also an, an opportunity. We did a study recently and we found out that uh, you know there uh, a majority of the new green models and jobs uh, you know, based on this uh, part, 
will actually get created in Asia. And, and India would obviously be one of the most, uh, and we, we estimated that around 133 million uh, new jobs uh, will get created uh, uh, in, in, in that. And once you have that, then you expand it to your, uh, to your value network. That's your suppliers. So that scope one, scope two, scope three actually can uh, be, uh, be actually handled. Now that, that to me is the phases that uh, uh, you do. So what's the way forward? The way forward is capture your, uh, you know, you today what in my IT systems, I'm working on top line, I'm working on bottom line. Now the companies need to work on the green line also. So from top line to bottom line to green line, we start, match, you know, and three areas, focus on emissions, focus on waste, focus on inequality. Focus on inequality. And all three areas, technology will actually help you and that will lead to the inclusive growth. The biggest, the biggest challenge today that the, and, and business has, business has a disproportionate responsibility because most of the emissions come from uh, the, the economic activities, right. right? So, you know, so that's where we have a disproportionate sense and that is where digital technologies can actually come in big way to help. Uh, example, uh, you know, we, we uh, have this, uh, uh, you know, uh, initiative called Green Token. Right. What it does is uses blockchain right. to actually trace your uh, product Absolutely. and find out what is the recycling, what is the <coughs> traceability of the, of the whole. That itself adds so much of uh, right. value. Absolutely. Examples like mm. Waycool in India, they have Absolutely. actually used and, and, and found out. So right. that's the next mm. thing that, and today, the, the, if, if I have to uh, give a final concluding thing, digital and sustainability are to be used as an interwoven strategy now. Right. It cannot be two separate. Oh, you are absolutely right and that's the good way of ending this interview because you said that uh, the green line has to be integrated part of our all conversation from absolutely. bottom line, uh, top line to bottom line. Let's have the green line also yes. and measure all of them all uh, across all the uh, uh, points. So thank you so much Dr. Chanana for sharing our time with us and sharing your views especially on as to how the cloud has become important, the what kind of role the SME can play and why the digitization is really important for our MSME. You also spoke about very important thing as to how the next generation technologies are going to play a very important role in terms of improving the transparency, improving the government experience, and some of the role that SAP is playing in enabling some of these things, and especially your comment on sustainability as to how we have to make our IT infra more sustainable, why the green line has to become a very important line within our um, business discussion. So thank you so much once again for your time. Thank, thank you. you. But I think just just uh, while, I, while I thank you for this, uh, I think one last parting point, if you permit me, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, during COVID, we saw this huge uh, potential for government uh, industry collaboration in right. India as a part of the crisis handling. We worked with the Indian government on ensuring their linkage of supply right. uh, chain tracking of um, oxygen uh, there. I think we now need to institutionalize this uh, right. as we move forward and together, hmm. I think the vision of New India is right. very much achievable. Dr. Shanana, thank you so thank much. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you.